welcome. We're going to get started here in a second. Alright, so this evening the plan is to fly uh, American Airlines 737-800. It is a regional jet twin engine. We're flying out of Bangor International Airport and heading towards Logan International in Boston. This should be a relatively short flight. And uh, before we get too involved with the flight, I just wanted to show you kind of the route. And it should be uh, overcast, but it's relatively clear uh, as far as rain and that kind of thing. No thunderstorms, no snow. We do have a system that's kind of lurking on to the east. Um, and then we'll kind of encounter some weather um, just before we hit Boston, but I don't think it'll be anything too serious. Um, it will make for an interesting approach, I believe. And we can already see some traffic. Um, and again, um, we are flying out of Bangor International, and we're at gate five. All right. So let's jump in. The current weather right now is not great very rainy as you can see unfortunately if we go outside the aircraft and let's just use the camera we can see the poor passengers are going to have to be shuttled across the tarmac and to go through this up to the stairs just uh, apparently was enough room uh, at any of the other gates with the jetway so here we are and the weather as you can see is not that great Alright, before we get started, we are going to request ground power. And while that's doing that, we are going to turn the batteries on. We now see that ground power is available to us because this is highlighted, uh, or the lights on, the indicators on. So we're going to switch that down and switch from battery to ground power. This will get us to a state where we can start configuring the flight computer. Um, But what we're actually going to do first is let's get a better view. Alright, we're going to turn the probe heat on, the window heat on. We're also going to arm the emergency lights. We're 
we're going to get ready to start the APU. To, in order to do that, we're going to need to turn on the aft fuel pump for uh, the first engine. And to start the APU, oh, let's go back up. Oh, I guess it's not going to let us. Let's just get it over here. To start the APU, we just move the switch from off and to start. And you can see the gauge jump here. And the APU is basically a small jet engine that's located behind the plane, back here. You can see the inlet right there. the heat. This APU is going to supply power. It's got a generator so it will supply power to the aircraft so we don't have to rely on the ground power. It also provides uh, air pressure um, so we can start the two main engines. And we will know when that's ready to go when we see that light up, and it just did. So now we're going to switch over to the APU bus. And, alright. So the APU is running, and we're now on the APU for power. Next thing we're going to do is over here, uh, switch these hydraulics, pumps on. Actually, before we get too far, let's turn our wing lights, wheel well, and local lights, and anti-collision will turn it on. The other fuel pumps, let's turn those on, so that uh, they're ready to go when we start the engines, which we're not going to do yet. First, we're going to program the flight computer. And actually, before we do that, we need to come up here, and there's these two switches here. If we hit this button, we can see them better. So up here, we need to switch these to nav. And this is the IRS. This is what helps the plane figure out where it is positioned in the world, and how to, it helps with the navigation. So we need to set those. And also, it's pretty dark, so let's turn the light up here on, and actually we're going to turn that panel lights on. Same thing down here, the pedestal. Go. And over here, same thing. Okay, where were we? Alright, we were setting the lights and we set the IRS. Uh, we, so now we need to help get it aligned. And we do that, you can see the computer is telling us we need to do that. So we clear that and go to this page and we're going to enter in the reference airport, which is Bangor, KBGR. see the airport, um, the coordinates, but um, what we could do is actually go to the next page and get the GPS coordinates, and copy that down, and set that in the set IRS position, and now we have done that. You can see our systems are now showing uh, on the main display here, primary display. Alright, I think it looks good there. So now we're going to go to the route. It already knows that we're at Bangor, so it's already entered it here, so we can just 
hit that. And then I believe we're going to be taking off runway 15. But to be sure, we need to find out. So, from the airport. So, let's tune in to get the weather information. Which I think for Bangor is 127.75. That's all we need. So, burn wave 15 is in use. Let's we'll put it down. Our final destination is going to be Boston, Logan, so key K B O S. Um, in this case, I actually have this flight plan already uh, kind of preloaded to save some time. So, what we're going to do is we're going to select that. And we'll just give it a minute to load it up. Or to pull in the information. There we go. Let's go ahead and load. Right up late loading. It's ready to go, so we're going to activate it and execute. There we go. Alright, so if we go into our departure, we can set that up. So we're going to take the BGR4 SID and take runway 15, execute. And then for our arrival, we're going to be coming from. We're actually going to be landing on uh, runway 22 left via ILS, so we're going to select that, and it's going to be via Ocean 5, and via uh, AJ, so execute, go back, we're going to modify this route, we're going to get rid of this vector, and the same thing right here, we're going to basically delete that, and then execute good there. Alright, so to set the preferences first, we're going to set the fuel. We're going to shortcut it a bit to uh, trying to remember what the flight plan said. Let's take a look. Give me one second. Take a look and see what we got on the flight plan. For fuel, we have all right. Looks like we have a total of five. About six tons, we'll say. So let's do this. We'll just set it to one third. It gives us 33%. It's probably going to be plenty more than what we're going to need. So we'll get rid of that. We'll go back there. We could have actually requested the fuel truck and waited for it to actually load the fuel and all that, but we're not going to do that to save time. All right, let's go back to the flight computer. We're going to enter in our zero fuel weight. We're just gonna put a zero for reserves. Cost index is gonna be 18. And our planned fuel is 15.4. That's in tons. So, um, our cruising altitude 
know at HA we have to be above flight level 290, so let's just put that in for now. It's probably going to complain. Alright, and one limit, we're going to keep that the way it is. For flaps, we're going to put 5% and set our V1, 2, and 3. Also, center of gravity, we're going to set, and then we need to set our trim to 4.78. Yeah, that should be about there. Okay, so that's been set. The legs are looking good. They're configured correctly. Okay, I can't think of anything else we need to set there. Let's just um, set our course to 220. Same thing over here. Our heading, let's also set that to 220. Our cruising altitude, we're going to set that at 290. We also need to do the same thing up here for our pressurization. Okay, we're pretty much I think, ready to go. We'll set the, we'll arm the auto throttle and the flight directors. Both sides need to be on. We'll pre-select VNAV and LNAV. Make sure our parking brake is, is on. And go back to ground services. And we're going to release the ground power. And we're going to remove the wheel chocks. You can see the APU is still still running, so we should probably turn that off. And this is a view from inside the cabin. So uh, let's go ahead and turn the engines on so we can switch from the APU. So to do that, we need to make sure the fuel pumps are on, which we already did. Um, we don't have any fuel in the center tanks, so we have those stay off for now. We're going to start with engine 2. We're going to start that one first. Um, and actually, in order for that to start, uh, we need to make sure that the APU bleed is on. And now we can start. And so down here, we look at this number right here, N2, that needs to get to 28. So now what we're going to do is give it some fuel. And that number up here will jump. Okay, you just heard that click. That was the switch going off position because the engine has been started. So now we're going to do the other engine on the left.
Alright, we're definitely at 28 and 2, so let's give it some fuel. Actually, at this point, we would normally have pushback, but we're not going to worry about that. Even though we do have this guy in the way, so you know what? Um, no, actually, no, we're not going to worry about it. We'll just ignore him. Oh, yes, so both engines have started, and I forgot that we should now switch over from the APU to the engines as far as uh, generating electricity. So we're going to do that by switching that switch and then this switch. We don't, we are now no longer using the APU to generate power. We are using the engine, the main engines on the left and right on the wings. So, so we can turn the APU off now. Just like that. Alright, so we're about to taxi. So we're going to turn the taxi lights on and the landing lights are going to be turned on. The strobes are going to be turned on. Right there. Okay. So we're going to ignore that vehicle right there and that guy to the right of us. Just pretend they don't uh, exist. And we're going to proceed. Um, I think what we're going to do is, I kind of don't want to use the air traffic controller or the ATC that's the system, Microsoft Flight Simulator default system. Um, so I think we're just going to ignore that for now usually causes more problems than what's worth so all right so let's go ahead and taxi park brake off and oh yes before we get started we need to actually put the flaps down to five degrees which is three positions and yaw damper should be turned on which is up here there we go um, and since the engines have started, we can now turn the left and right packs on. Which is basically your conditioner. Okay, now we're good to go. So, park the brake off, and let's give it some throttle. Way. Slow going.
It's a little bit of a taxi down to runway 15. Let's verify a couple things here. So we're going to go and look at next waypoints, which is actually looking, heading 224. So let's actually adjust our course. So we're going to 224. Over here, same thing, 224. And we're going to want to be above flight level 290, which we're at. We need to turn this on to TARA, which is uh, transmit and receive, I think, or something like that. That's pretty much it. We can test this if we want our fire system, detection system. Yep, that works. It is raining, we could fly around with a bunch of wipers. Probably turn this light off now. I believe a lot of these fuses actually should actually work or not. Sorry, Logan. You can see it's computers asking us to verify our takeoff speed, so let's go ahead and do that. Or 
are anti skid, not auto skid. We can turn the brightness of the floods down. Plays to turn those down a little bit. Alright, last look over here. Let's get there and change this. Auto. We can turn the wheel lights off. Wheel well lights rather. Wheel lights will keep on. The technician on. Logo will keep that on. We'll turn the taxi lights off momentarily. We won't turn the landing lights off until we get above 10,000 feet. short point. Everything looks good. Computer's all configured. Um, the only thing I haven't done yet is set the pressure, which I just did. We're at 29.95 inches. Once we get above 18,000 feet, we'll change that to standard. sun trying to get through the clouds and rain. So Bangor International has a very long runway. It's like 11,444 feet. That's why it took us a while to get from the parking to runway 15, which is the far end. We're going to need probably a lot of that runway, especially given the day, the weather, you never know. Stop up at that old short point for just a second to look things over one more time and then we'll be good to go. At that point, we would have had clearance from the tower to if we were cleared to take off. In this case, we will be. So we'll stop right here just quick. on for just a second. It's not hard. Okay, I think we're good. Break off.
is um, sure a bit of a wind gust, so we're kind of getting into the wind here. So it's taking a little bit more to get going here. Okay, it's momentum. sock right there so we were like basically right pointing directly into the wind all right so let's get lined up I think we're good to go so let's take off Knots. Approaching V1. V1, rotate. Okay, put that button. Yo. Positive rate of climb. You're up.
taxi lights are off. Pretty spectacular views. Alright, we're at 16,000 feet, still climbing, we're traveling at uh, 298 knots. Everything is looking good still. Change this display though. I like to have all the engine information on this display and all the system information on the bottom one so when we land we can see like our wheels, our brake temperatures, hydraulics, things like that. Alright, we can zoom out the range. So it looks like we're going to basically hit our top of descent for our target altitude just right before AJ which is exactly what we need to do things are going surprisingly smooth hopefully I just didn't jinx that we're going to want to keep an eye so when we hit our top of the sun, we're going to need to change our altitude and the um, the flight control unit here, or whatever they call it, the autopilot basically, that needs to be changed to, I usually will set that to the last altitude and before we land on runway 22L, which is uh, 1700, so let's keep that in mind. So when we hit our target altitude, we can set that to the landing altitude. Oh, and something I forgot to do is we're above 18,000 feet, so we need to set the standard pressure. That helps calibrate our altitude. Currently climbing at a rate of about 1900 feet per minute. A target altitude of 290. 
for a flight level 290. And also since we're in the air, we can arm our speed brakes for later. Unlike uh, Airbus, Boeing, you don't arm the speed brake prior to takeoff. It will yell at you if you do. So we are about 4 no, 4.9 mile no, no, I'm sorry, no, we're not. Let's see here. We are about 19.5 nautical miles out from hitting our first waypoint. just hit our first waypoint and now we're heading to the next which is 42.1 nautical miles up. From this point we need to be above at least 11,000 feet which we are but we are going to set our altitude like I said. Oh actually we haven't even hit our sorry we can not do that yet. We are first going to wait until we hit our cruising altitude. Which for some reason oh for some reason I thought it was two six zero, it's actually two nine zero. Alright, so actually 
actually we are good. Two sets the altitude to one seven zero. You know, so the reason why VNAV wasn't engaging was because I hadn't set the altitude. Starting our descent. Heading to uh, Safai, and then we're going to be uh, following, or we're going to be going to Nico after that. And we need to be above it, like, at least, like I said, 11,000 feet. Here we are. We are currently descending at a rate of 1,400 feet per minute, and we're maintaining this speed of about 259 knots. say we are a bit above higher than we should be so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to engage the speed brake a little bit this doesn't really do a whole lot on the Boeing but it'll help a little bit
Okay, so we're below 18,000 feet, so we're going to have to change back to standard pressure. So we've got a reading of 29.95 inches, which is exactly what we want. We're continuing to descend at about a rate of 2,000 feet per minute. And our target is about 14,000 feet is where we want to be at. Probably release the speed brake. Okay, so we are approaching ocean. We're going to be traveling at, should be at about a rate of 250 knots, and we need to be below 14,000 feet but above 9,000 feet, which is exactly where we're about. We're at 12,000 feet right now. We're continuing to descend.
Okay. We're getting into our approach. So far, we're at, as far as fuel, we're good on fuel. We're at 11.2 tons, 5.6 each on each wing. Engines are looking good. Our altitude is exactly where it needs to be. We're ascending at an altitude of 9,000 feet right now. We need to be below that. We should be approaching 7,000 as our next target. Look at the view. view and this is live weather too so this is basically what you would see if you were in Boston right now approaching 6,000 feet still descending on. I should have turned them on when we hit 10,000 feet. Um, what else? That's pretty much all we need to turn on. That's just what we need it to be.
Alright, at this point, I think I'm going to start lowering the flaps. so far. Engine temps, oil pressure is good. Descending at a rate about 500 feet per minute, 4,000 feet, and we're traveling at a speed of about 149 knots, almost 150 knots. Speed brakes, arms, flaps are down all the way. Lights are on. Boston, folks. I 
guess I should hold off from saying that until we land. Exactly where we need to be. We're all lined up in the parkway. We do have a bit of a crosswind. You can kind of tell it's pushing the aircraft to the left a little bit. So we'll have to compensate. in manually. thrusters, brakes, there you go. Easy as that. We're going to 
turn up here. Taxi light on. I'm just going to turn up here. gate I believe I can't remember if the what the flight plan said I think it was an A twenty two or something like that. So I think it's down pretty far down. So I'm just gonna follow this taxi way. Imagine Logan Air International is a pretty big airport, so. A little bit of a taxi. Right now we're on a taxiway M and we're gonna turn onto taxiway B here in a second. So we're going to start the APU. So we can turn the engines off and switch. And have power. We'll switch over to APU power. We'll do that once we park. Coming up to the fire station, airport fire, see the uh, fire engines over there, the tankers.
to runway Echo. Oh, sorry, not runway, taxiway. See a few of the gates over there. We're basically going to be way down, down here. Gate B16, and so I don't know if it's the original, the original sign gate, but we're gonna go with it. Normally, um, the airport would sign you a gate once you arrived. We're 7:37, so we're gonna try to get that. Pretty smart. On, so we're going to switch over to that power. We're going to turn the engines off. There, it's actually we're going to request. Um, Brown JN three sixteen seven three eight heavy. Could you please connect the jetway to the aircraft? JN three sixteen seven three eight heavy. The jetway is going to be connected. There. So turn the X. Get those on auto. Window heat off, probe heat off, uh, damper turn off, the fuel pump switch turn off, we'll leave the aft fuel pump on, the APU. Let's request get some ground power hookup. 
ground services. And set the chops and request ground power. Our power is being connected in the meantime. Lights off. Strobes to steady. And take collision off. Will turn. Those lights off. Wheel shocks. Wheel lights will turn on. Landing lights off. Taxi lights off. Ground power is connected, so we'll switch to that. And then we'll turn the APU off. There we go. Packs can be turned off as well. APU bleed off. IRS, let's turn those off. For that, and that's pretty much it. Turn the battery off a lot. Shut everything down. The reason why we still have power is because we got ground power. Um, if we were to turn emergency, arm the emergency lights on, or just turn them on like that. Turn on, but if we disconnect the ground power, um, everything turns off and the emergency lights turn on. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for flying with us.